The didgeridoo means it's time for the Australia News Desk. Here's two of the craziest guys we could find south of the equator. It's Steve Vischer and Grant McHaren from the Plain Crazy Down Under podcast. Day one. What is the date? Fourth of March. It's the fifth. No, it's not. It's the fourth. It's the fourth. Get to watch it works. Dude. It's, a, it's a railway watch. It's ahead of time. Yeah. It's <laughs> the only way you can come in early. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Dateline, March 4th, 2012. Well, g'day, folks, and welcome back to the Australia Desk for episode... Uh, what, what episode is it, Grant? We're out here in an air oh, show, and I mate, can't I remember. I have no idea. I think it's 88 or 80-something. 180-something. Well, you can use it wherever you like, Max, but uh, we're here in an air show today. We're even doing this on camera just to impress everybody, so there you go. Yeah, and you've got Steve, you've got Grant, and we've got... ATC Ben as the designated mic holder. There you go. Somebody had to hold the microphone so Steve could have his uh, have his notes and I could uh, look cool standing beside you. Yeah, right. For our airplane clicks that don't know, ATC Ben, we call him ATC Ben because he's an air traffic controller here in Australia and he occasionally, he hasn't done it for a while, does an air traffic control segment uh, on our show occasionally. Although, you know, he does advise us even if he can't come on in. Yeah. We know you've been busy, mate. Very occasionally. But, uh, okay, what have we got today, Steve? Well, uh, since I'm not sitting here in my studio in front of notes, I have bought some notes. Oh my god, yes. Uh, the first one we're going to do this week is uh, Air Australia. Now, we uh, talked a couple of weeks ago about Air Australia. Uh, no sooner did they rebrand from Strategic uh, and uh, as Air Australia and uh, started up as a new low cost carrier or low value carrier, as we've taken to call them, then they were granted. Uh, they went bankrupt, and I'll tell you what, mate, uh, to the tune of $90 million, and yeah. it doesn't look like their creditors are going to get any of their money back. No, they only had about $400,000 in the bank when they were still trying to operate the airline. All indications are that they were trading while insolvent. That's a big no-no. They're going to be in deep trouble. Now, it's interesting here that uh, the administrators that have taken over this uh, this airline is uh, Quarter Mentha. That's Mark Quarter. Uh, is uh, Quarter Mentha now? Of course, uh, they were they made themselves famous with uh, liquidating the former Ansett Airlines here in Australia. And uh, the, the, I suppose this will be rather small potatoes for them taking it over. But uh, they're saying here that uh, yeah, they had less than 500 grand in the bank. And um, 350 employees uh, likely to receive $5 million, but they're owed $8 million, so uh, they'll be lucky if they get any of that back. And uh, if you bought a ticket with uh, Air Australia and you paid cash for it, kiss goodbye to that money, I'd oh, say. definitely. It's all over for you, mate. Uh, yeah, I mean, the first warnings that were coming out were when uh, Air Australia were unable to, when you were buying your tickets, you were una- unable to get the... Uh, the insurance against them going insolvent that was the first warning that there was problems they tried to ride over the top of that but we all know where that wound up and uh, yeah really sad it's always good to see a new airline come in we really want to see somebody destabilize things bring down prices keep everyone honest but unfortunately it just didn't work for them it looks like they put too much money into uh, parties and big splashy extravaganzas in Hawaii and not enough into running an airline how come they never invited us to any of those parties that's what I want I probably knew what we'd be asking me (laughs) Well, uh, moving on here to Qantas now, uh, we've uh, spoken a few times in the past about Qantas and their attempts to uh, have the Qantas Sale Act of 1992 uh, changed in order to allow them to uh, restructure their company more dramatically and in fact um, basically offshore the entire lot as far as I can tell, but it uh, looks like the federal government is uh, not coming to the party. No, they're not. The, uh, the whole thing with the Qantas Sale Act is that uh, you're only allowed to have 49% international ownership of any Australian airline to allow it to remain an Australian flag carrier. And uh, the way things are going for Qantas is that they're trying to find ways through Jetstar and other methods of off-selling and beating, getting around the corner of this uh, Qantas Sale Act. They're, the government's not allowing them to make any changes and Qantas getting all upset because Virgin has just turned around and they're going to split their company in two. You're going to have an international arm and that will have 49% international ownership and the rest Australian and that will allow it to be an international flag carrier but the domestic can be 100% owned internationally. So that's going to allow them to bring, um, ooh, I'd say their partners such as Etihad and Singapore in to uh, take a big uh, controlling interest in that domestic carrier pump a lot of money in and allow that domestic carrier to uh, do a really good job of flying all those international passengers that Eddie had, uh, Singapore and others are going to bring in. Now it's been a very tumultuous week here uh, in politics but uh, Transport Minister Anthony Albanese uh, took time out from the political infighting this week and actually said that uh, he's quoted here as saying in the Australian uh, over many years Qantas has demonstrated that, that it can adapt to uh, changing global market conditions while still being governed by the Qantas Sale Act so uh, I'd say Alan Joyce is going to have to find another way around restructuring his company. Oh, mate it's not looking real uh, real easy for him that's for sure. Now you spoke about uh, Virgin Australia and as I try not to get too twitchy about it Grant They've announced some price rises for the carbon tax. Oh, there we go. Now, now Ben, a.k.a. Veggie, 
you're here and we're watching Steve go bright red and not just from the sun. We can catch it on video. Here's Steve Vischer getting angry and irate. I'm, I'm going to have to hold him back soon. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, it I've, I've been at air. I'm feeling very mellow today after being oh, in the air show. Okay. But uh, yes, the carbon tax. So uh, Virgin says today that the initial surcharge uh, for flights less than 900 uh, kilometres in length uh, will be $1.50, uh, moving on to uh, $6 per sector. Uh, and that's uh, just uh, for starters, um, or $6 rather, is for the uh, flights uh, longer than 2,000 kilometres. Now, that doesn't sound like much when you're talking about per sector. And don't forget that uh, this price is uh, going to increase uh, every six months until it gets up to $29 a tonne. And uh, if that hasn't destroyed our economy before then, I suppose some people will be having to play uh, a lot more to fly in aircraft. Well, that's definitely going to be the case. It's all the whole point of this carbon tax, and it's like the uh, European uh, ETS. They're all supposed to bring in the thing that you uh, you. It's going to make you buy the cheaper option because the cheaper option is going to be using a carbon reduction method to uh, have to pay less for their carbon tax and all this kind of junk. The reality is it's just going to put a tax on everything and we're all going to wind up paying more and we're going to be uh, a lot worse off at the end. Yep. And there goes Jim Wickham towing his uh, three-quarter scale P-51. Giving that a tow across to uh, back to Wicko's World, I guess. But uh, Interesting, though, to you uh, talk there, Grant, about uh, the uh, the European carbon tax. Virgin also said in a separate statement that it, uh, for any of their international flights that are heading up into that area of the world, the surcharge will be $2.80 per sector. Now, uh, the strong Australian dollar at the moment, uh, it's about a dollar eight to the US dollar, so uh, very good for travellers. Now, our airlines are crying poor, saying that this is really hurting them. And, of course, they buy their fuel in US dollars, so it is hurting uh, a lot of businesses in this country, and the airlines are no exception for that. But uh, what that does mean is that it makes it very affordable for Australians to travel overseas, and they've been doing that a lot. Now, the uh, probably one of the biggest uh, travel agency outfits here in Australia is Jet Set Tours, and uh, I'll tell you what, it's been fantastic for them. They've seen a 738% rise in half-year net profit to $11 million as a result. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think they'll be uh, they'll be jump, they'll be uh, too uh, unhappy at all. They're, they're really excited about the fact that the Aussie dollar is so big. So lots of Australian tourists. It is actually cheaper for us to go and take our whole family across to Fiji than it is for us to go up to a family reunion up in uh, Queensland or the northern New South Wales area. It's, it's absolutely crazy. You can go further, you can have more fun, you can stay in a hotel and you can travel the world for less than it costs you to go to the outback of Australia. So uh, no wonder the, uh, the tour agents are, are very happy. It means a lot of Aussies going out and uh, seeing the world it means a lot of money coming through to them. But the uh, side effect of this, of course, is that no one's going to the Australian tourism places and foreign tourists are down because the Aussie do dollar is so high, it's now costing them a lot more to go to Uluru and places like that, and tourism is down in general. In fact, uh, up on the Gold Coast now, there's a lot of resort islands up there, Hamilton Island and uh, islands such as that. I can't remember the name of an island, but I did uh, remember hearing on one of the financial reports this week, in fact, that as a result of the high dollar, uh, one of the big resorts up there in Queensland's Gold Coast is uh, actually shutting down. That's so. the, uh, the Hyatt Coolum. Uh, that's the, the Hyatt Coolum has actually shut down. I remember when they opened and they were doing a big triathlon uh, to open that. That was back in the 80s. Uh, Coolum is sort of like a, the little brother to Noosa. They don't like hearing that, but uh, <laughs> Coolum, Coolum's a, a very beautiful part of uh, very beautiful part of, uh, of Queensland and, and Australia. But unfortunately, the Hyatt up there just hasn't worked out, and they've had to shut it down. Uh, look, it's very interesting what they're saying about the, the these same groups that were saying they were seeing a drop off in, in attendance because of the Qantas grounding and the Qantas strikes and all that. They were up saying, oh, get these get Qantas sorted out, get the uh, unions back working because of the, their industrial d disputes and distra disruptions. We're seeing drop off in our uh, in our incoming uh, tourists, despite the fact that most of them are serviced by Jetstar, not Qantas, and Qantas is only about 18% of our inbound uh, international anyhow, so quite clearly that was all just a big put on and a media spin, mate. Mm, there you go, well there's going to be a lot of changes in our economy this year, and I'm pretty sure we'll talk a lot about it, but uh, not today, let's not spoil a day by talking about politics and economics. We've had a wonderful day here at Tyab. Uh, ATC Ben, you've done a wonderful job with the microphone there, mate. Uh, how did you enjoy the day here at, uh, at Tyab? The uh, day here was actually really good. Uh, good nice to see you to see an actual aeroplane instead got, of looking at blitz on the screen. Correct, yeah, um, it's, it's amazing. These actually made of aluminium and uh, things like that mm. they're not just these green circles on the screen yeah. no. so and they've got people in them it took, took me a while to recognize what they actually were um no, I'm not, not really a stranger to aeroplanes at the moment. I am getting my license back. Yes, oh. tomorrow. In so, fact, we are. so tomorrow. Well, yeah. If, if this Weather big, if, if this big dark grey above us doesn't actually come down too low again, um, I should be doing my check it? my check flight tomorrow. No, oh, just VFR. VFR yeah. twin. 
that single. Oh, yeah, yeah so they go, work up to twin. That's like overboard. You've got to win a lottery to fly twin engine aircraft. In <laughs> well, hey, don't forget he's got his Miko. He's got his multi engine command instrument rating. Oh, he had it. A, a, a very expired multi engine yeah, command yeah, instrument expired rating. Yeah, expired licenses. That's a theme around here. Yeah, uh, well, you know, one day <laughs> but, I'll uh, uh, Once I've got that back, expired. I'll go flying in the single a little bit. We're standing here under the wing of a Gifts Aero GA8 Air Van. Our wonderful sponsors here are playing crazy down under. You know, we should take this for a flight, Ben. Well, I think that could be a lot of fun, mate. And you know what? We've also got the uh, first. Uh, that's not the first RAOs. That is not the first RAOs. No. Uh, okay. It's the first VH registered. No. no, no, it's not the first VH. It was the first RAOs. And in fact, folks, if we come out here, God. in fact, folks, if, if Ben would actually hurry up and follow me when I lead off when he's not expecting it, <laughs> and if we just look over the other side of the GA8 air van, you've got the uh, first ever Skycatcher registered for RAOs here in Australia. So, uh, yeah, not a bad thing. We've also got a VH registered standard. Uh, standard uh, V8 normal air, uh, GA air, aircraft registered uh, Skycatcher over there so all that and Warbirds what a heck of a tarmac absolutely well I'm going to go home and uh, start peeling off this sunburn ground I don't know about you but uh, it's been a very exhausting day particularly after that uh, late night we had last night drinking more than one light beer yeah yeah you had at least two or three light beers and I tell you what there's still one in my fridge contaminating it so <laughs> oh, I'm not go. sure what I'm going to do about that light beer in my fridge you put a light beer oh, in no. my fridge unbelievable <laughs> well we better get back to your place and rectify oh, that folks until next okay. week, I'm Steve Fisher. And I'm still Grant McCarran. Cheers, folks. Hey, yeah. Oh, there's going to be a lot of editing in that one. <laughs>